In this video I will start explaining you how one can use the policy gradient to perform policy search. So let's first formalize the problem. So consider that we have a robot and we want the robot to collect as many balls as possible whatever the situation on a tennis court. We have to consider three objects. First we have a set of trajectories to i. Second, we have the reward along this trajectory, which corresponds to a number of uh, balls, and we call it R of to i. And third, we have the controller of the robot, which is a parameterized policy, uh, where theta is a vector of parameter. For instance, it can be weights and biases in a neural network. So we want to optimize the global utility function g of theta, which is the expectation over all the trajectories of the reward corresponding to these trajectories. So we want to have trajectories that bring as much reward as possible. For that, we will tune the policy parameter theta. So the goal is to find theta star, which is the best set of policy parameters, which maximizes the global utility function, so it can be re re rewritten that's the sum over all the trajectories of the reward of this trajectory multiplied by the probability of this trajectory given parameters theta. Okay, And this element, the probability of the trajectory given the parameters theta, that's something very important in the policy gradient derivation. Once we have introduced those probability p of to given theta, the general idea of the policy gradient approach consists in increasing the probabilities of the trajectories which, which give a high return. And for that we want to apply gradient ascent. So we want to follow the gradient of those probabilities from analytical knowledge. The problem is that in general the function that relates the parameter theta to the global utility function g is unknown. So we cannot apply a gradient directly to this uh, function. So the key question is how can we apply gradient ascent without knowing this function? And you will see that the answer is the policy gradient theorem. So to be more precise, to compare to uh, the direct policy search, in direct policy search we work with samples theta and g of theta. Okay? By doing so, we ignore the fact that g of theta comes from state and action trajectories generated by a controller P of theta. Okay? And we will see that we can obtain explicit gradient by taking these informations into account. By doing so, the policy search technique won't be black box anymore because it will use the state, action and reward along trajectories of the agent at each step. Okay. But the transition and reward function will still be unknown. So it's not black box anymore, it's a gray box approach because we have access to a little part of the information. You will see that to get the policy gradient derivation it will require some math magics. And I have to say that this lesson builds a lot on a video from Peter Bill during the deep RL bootcamp that was in uh, three years ago. So remind that we want to find those parameters theta star that maximize that particular expression. And we want to do so by taking the gradient of g of theta. So we write this gradient by just plugging the gradient into that expression. Okay. Then we move the sum outside of the gradient because the gradient of sum is the sum of gradient. We will add this term, which consists in just multiplying by 1, OK? And then we move this part of the term here, OK? And by doing this, we have this expression, and this can be rewritten in this way, because the gradient of the log can be written this way, OK? So finally, if you look closely at this expression, that's a sum over trajectory of the probability of those trajectory times this term, and this can be rewritten as the expectation of that particular term by definition of the expectation. So far, this is very easy, OK? So we have the gradient of g rewritten this way. Let's continue. So to compute our gradient, we want to compute this expression. 
The point is that we don't have an analytical expression for the probability of the trajectory given the policy parameters. This is very complicated to get the probability of a particular trajectory of a robot given the parameters of his controller. Okay. So since we don't have this analytical expression, we cannot compute that gradient directly. So let's use the additional information that I've told you about. Let's reformulate the probability of a trajectory given policy parameters using the policy itself. So let's think again. What is the probability of a trajectory? In fact, you can consider that at each step, you will have the probability of taking a particular action, which is defined by this policy, times the probability of reaching the next state given the current state and the action. And then you will have the complete trajectory by multiplying the probability over all the states for the whole horizon of the trajectory. So this gives you this formula. Okay. So the probability of the trajectory given the policy parameters is the product over the horizon of the probability of reaching the next states times the probability of taking the action. The point is that to write this expression you have to make a strong assumption, which is known as Markov assumption, because this computation will hold only if the states are independent. Okay, if you want to have a product of probabilities, you need to consider that the different states are independent. Okay, but let's use this expression and consider that Markov assumption holds. So under Markov assumption, we can rewrite the log probability of a trajectory given um, policy parameters this way. This is just a rewrite. Okay. Then I will use the fact that the log of a product is the sum of the log. Okay. So I will just put the log inside the product this way. Okay. And if you look more closely, in that particular term, you don't have policy parameters theta. Okay. This is just dependent on the dynamics of the environment. This is not dependent of the controller itself. So you can remove this term because the, its gradient with respect to theta is null. So finally you just get this term. And what is, is very interesting here is that you don't need the dynamics model of your environment anymore. So the gradient of this log probability can be rewritten as a gradient of something with respect to the policy. And the key, the central idea in the policy gradient theorem is that we don't know this expression, but we know this expression because the policy itself is something that we have written. It can be, for instance, a neural network. So we can determine the gradient of the log probability of an action given a state, depending on the parameters, um, just by derivating the expression of the policy uh, with respect to those parameters. And that's the key insight in the policy gradient theorem. So given the results of the previous slide, this expression can be rewritten in this expression. Okay. So if we want to compute the gradient of the global utility function with respect to theta parameter, we have to consider the expectation of all possible trajectories of that particular expression. The point is that we cannot access the expectation over all the possible trajectories. That's not doable physically. So what we will do is that we will approximate this expectation by sampling over m trajectories. Okay, And if we take m large enough, we will have a good approximate of this expectation. So finally, by rewriting over m trajectories, we get the gradient of the global utility function with respect to policy parameters as a sum over m um, trajectories, and in fact we take the average, so we divide by m, of that expression where the, the actions at and state st have been uh, particularized corresponding to the different tra m trajectories. Okay. And as I told you on the previous slide, the key insight here is that the policy structure P of theta is known. Choose this particular gradient can be computed for any state action pair. Okay. And if you think now with taking more distance with respect to where we were at the beginning and where we are now, we moved from a direct policy search problem on G of theta to a gradient ascent of P of theta which is nice because we can compute that particular gradient. 
So considering this gradient can be turned into a practical algorithm, but the point is, as you will see on the next videos, that this algorithm is not so efficient. So what is the algorithm doing? We collect trajectories where we start from a first state, we perform a first action, we take a first reward, etc, etc. So we collect m such trajectories. For each trajectory, we compute the sum of the reward along the trajectory. So we col just collect the sum of those terms. Okay, And then we compute the log probability of the action given the state considering the current controller. And we also multiply this probability by the global reward. Okay, And we do so for all trajectories. And this will give you the computation of a gradient. Okay, So we s sample those trajectories. We compute that particular loss, which is exactly the expression that I've presented to you. And then I, we will minimize the loss, where we just have put a minus so that minimization of the loss will maximize the gradient of the reward. For instance, if you are using a neural network, then you will use neural network backpropagation algorithms, which are provided by your favorite PyTorch or TensorFlow optimizer, which can be ADAM, RMSProp, Stochastic Gradient Descent, etc. So you do this, you apply this gradient to your policy parameters, and then you iterate, you sample again a new set of M trajectories, you perform a gradient ascent on that particular trajectories, and you do this for many time steps, and eventually your policy parameters will converge to optimal policy parameters so that the behavior of your robot improves over time. Okay. A quick note here is that if the reward along a particular trajectory is null, then this gradient does nothing because this term is zero, so your loss is zero and nothing happens. So this is important that you consider that if you have sparse reward, then it may happen that policy gradient won't work if you don't find reward. Okay, And that's the first algorithm, and now in next videos I will present to you improvement over this very simple algorithm. So if you have any questions, uh, let's consider them immediately.